Researchers conducting research projects that involve human beings must follow legal and ethical guidelines for such research to protect their human subjects. According to the law, researchers must follow three ethical principles, respect for persons and voluntary informed consent, beneficence, minimizing risks and maximizing benefits, and justice, equitable treatment for all, and extra care with vulnerable populations. At universities, the Human Subjects Committee, or Institutional Review Board, is charged with ensuring that all research involving human beings is carried out in an ethical and legal manner. All researchers studying human subjects must submit a protocol or proposal outlining their research to the IRB for approval prior to any engagement with the human subjects. The Human Subjects Committee is a board of faculty and community members charged with reviewing human subjects applications. Members are drawn from a variety of research disciplines and represent many types of scholarship. The committee reviews full committee applications once a month, Individual members review exempt and expedited applications throughout the year. Members take seriously their teaching mission at the university and help other researchers learn appropriate ways to conduct research involving human subjects. Human subject means a living person about whom a researcher obtains data through intervention like a physical procedure by which data are gathered or manipulations of the subject, or interaction, like communication or contact with the individual, or identifiable private information, information that is specific to a subject. As defined by the United States Department of Health and Human Services, the term research means a systematic investigation including research development, testing, and evaluation, designed to contribute to generalizable knowledge. When evaluating a specific project, focus on two key elements. First, that the project involves a systematic investigation, and second, that the design, meaning the goal, purpose, or intent of the investigation, is to develop or contribute to generalizable knowledge. Having only one of these properties means that the activity is not research and does not fall under the legal statute regarding human subjects. Human subjects research includes surveys, interviews, experiments with human participants, engaging or observing human participants completing an activity or task, studying human interaction with objects, information, or each other, and collecting data regarding human subjects, whether or not there is interaction with them. Here are some examples of human subjects research. Interviewing music teachers about their teaching methods, questionnaires about music engagement activities among college students, surveys about applications of a particular performance technique, or music therapy intervention to determine whether application of music affects pain levels during treatment in a hospital environment. Human subjects research does not include, for example, surveys for evaluating the performance of faculty, staff, and students, or other studies for internal institutional use only. This would not be a research activity oral history of New Orleans jazz artists, or interviews with individual famous teachers regarding their pedagogical techniques. In this case, information is not gathered for generalizable knowledge. Or observing people where their identifying information is not collected and there is no interaction with them. Researchers who are working with human subjects and hope to publish or distribute their research will need to prepare and submit a human subjects protocol for their project to be reviewed to determine whether or not it falls within the IRB purview. This is a part of the checklist in the Graduate Dean's Office for all master's and doctoral projects involving human subjects. 
class projects that are not intended to result in public display, distribution, or publication do not have to go through the IRB. Proper human subjects procedures should be followed, however. Class projects without IRB review prior to initiating research activities will not be able to be reviewed later, even if the researcher decides after working with human subjects that the project is worth public display, publishing, or distributing. Many music projects involving interview procedures are classified as oral history, which includes research described as ethnography or biography. In oral history projects, the participants are asked about their own thoughts, opinions, memories, and observations, which are presented as one person's viewpoint and are not considered representative of the experience of others. Oral history projects are not considered generalizable knowledge and are not required by law to be reviewed. However, at the university, all student research involving human subjects must be submitted for IRB review so that the university can make the determination if the project falls under oral history. Oral history projects will still require a release form, which is like a consent form, giving you permission to use information from interviews with subjects. If you feel your project is oral history, prior to completing an IRB protocol, contact Professor Clendinning or the Human Subjects Office staff regarding the project to have it reviewed. They will provide a pre-review of your project to determine if it falls under oral history or if a full IRB protocol and committee approval are needed. The IRB protocol is an official proposal that outlines the type of research you are proposing. You will complete the protocol after your graduate committee and or your faculty advisor have reviewed and approved your research project. At Florida State University, the IRB protocols are submitted using an online form and are electronically transmitted to the Human Subjects Office, then on to the reviewers on the Human Subjects Committee. Instructions for preparing your IRB protocol are available on the Human Subjects Committee website, and a detailed instructional video is available through the College of Music Graduate Office. The process of preparing the IRB protocol will help you think through and plan every step of your research project including assembling materials you need to conduct your research, such as surveys, questionnaires, and consent forms. Here are some questions to ask when planning research involving human subjects. What is your objective? What do you want to find out? Can these objectives be attained without involving human participants? If so, you should do it without human subjects. Who are your subjects? How were they chosen or identified? What surveys, interviews, observations, interactions, or other data collection procedures will you use? What has been done previously that is similar to your project? What specifically are you going to ask the participants to do? How long will it take? Where and when will it take place? Are you planning to audio or video record your subjects? Make a flowchart of your project. What will happen and when? Make sure to prepare all the materials that your subjects will see, including the invitation to participate, advertising flyers, consent and assent forms or scripts, interview questions, surveys, questionnaires, and any other materials you may be using for your project. Make sure to think about the risks and benefits of your project. What risks, if any, are involved? Is it minimal risk, meaning that there is no more risk than encountered in everyday life activities? What benefits are there to the participants? If there aren't any, say so. What benefits are there from this research to society? Do these outweigh the risks? Researchers are required to preserve participant privacy to the extent possible. 
Participants must be told whether their information will be identified with their name, kept confidential, or will be anonymous. How do you plan to protect the subject's privacy? How do you plan to protect confidential data? How long will this data be kept, and how will it be stored? And will you de-identify the data? Anonymous means that no one, not even the researcher, will know who has participated in the research. This is typical for online surveys, where there is no contact between the researcher and participants, and participants give no identifying information. Confidential means that the researcher, and possibly other participants, may know who is participating in research, but the researcher will not use names or identifying information in any published research. Interviews, focus groups, audio or video recording, and group testing cannot be anonymous. In these settings, participants' information can be kept confidential. Sometimes, interviewees will want to have their comments attributed, but if the researcher wants to provide subject names with quotations, specific permission is required from the subjects. If conducting research with children, teens, persons with cognitive disabilities, elderly persons, or other protected groups, the researcher must breach confidentiality if he or she observes activities that indicate a research subject is being abused or put in danger. For these reasons, consent forms will sometimes say, will be kept confidential to the extent allowed by law as the law requires reporting of potential abuse. Research involving activities that might embarrass a subject or subject him or her to possible legal action requires special care on the part of the researcher. Consent forms should include will be kept confidential to the extent allowed by law as the information may be subpoenaed if researchers ask about illegal activity. The human subject's application includes a complete description of your project, tasks the subjects will perform, information about your subjects, how you intend to recruit them, whether compensation is given, the risks and the benefits, confidentiality of data, and the informed consent process. The application also includes these items, which will be uploaded as files with the application. Recruiting materials, such as flyers, emails, and letters, consent and assent forms or scripts, questionnaires, surveys, and other materials, sample questions for interviews, and any other material that will be distributed to or viewed by subjects. The application is submitted online, but there is a printable version you can use to plan your project. The application requires your major professor's review and approval prior to review by staff or assignment to a human subjects committee member to review. Your major professor should review all of your application materials prior to submission and check it for completeness and accuracy prior to approving it online. Allow at least a month for the protocol approval process, twice that if it will go to more than one IRB. Protocols that go to full committee normally clear within a few days after the full committee meeting, but may require up to six weeks between submission and the full committee review. Protocols that are approved for expedited review may take one to four weeks for the IRB committee member to review them, depending on the time of year and that person's schedule. The first paragraph of a basic consent form should introduce you and your project, including the name of your project, what it's for, your name and contact information, your major professor's name and contact information, a brief description of the research, and why you are asking that person to participate. The second paragraph describes what you will ask your subjects to do, how long it will take, 
and other details regarding participation, such as audio or video recording. The third paragraph should address risks and benefits, confidentiality, and should also include any information about data storage and destruction. The final paragraph should address that participation is voluntary and the person is not obligated to participate. It should also include the IRB contact statement. If you are compensating participants in any way, like class credit or financial incentives, the details must be spelled out in the consent form. Just prior to the signature line, there is a statement of consent to participate. The participant needs to sign and date the form. You as a researcher do not need to sign. If you are allowing the option for the person's name to be used, photographs to be taken, or other optional elements, there should be separate checkboxes or signature lines for those. Participants should also be given a copy of the consent document. All research involving persons under the age of 18 requires both parental consent and minor assent. Though the parent has said it is okay for the child or student to participate in the research, the minor has the right to decide for him or herself whether or not he or she wants to participate. Assent forms must be age appropriate, at a reading level that fits the age of the child or student. Assent scripts may be used with younger children. Use of prisoners, pregnant women, elderly people, disabled persons, and subjects whose primary language is not English requires additional care in the informed consent process. Care must be taken to avoid coercion, where people feel that they must participate. Persons who are not mentally capable of giving informed consent must give assent after consent is given by their parent or legal guardian. Subjects who do not speak English must be presented with consent documents or with consent scripts in their native language or a tray language that they are comfortable using. Cultural sensitivity is required for working in other countries and with protected groups. Care must be taken to avoid coercion, especially if compensation is provided. When consent is obtained without the researcher collecting a written consent form is called waiver of documentation of consent. For example, online surveys where participants click a link to access the survey, then click yes or I consent after reading the consent form to indicate their consent and proceed to the survey, will employ waiver of documentation of consent. Waiver of documentation may also be approved for protocols using a consent script instead of a form, quick interviews where no identifying information is collected, surveys where turning it in indicates consent, and where possession of a signed form could be problematic, such as foreign countries where written consent is uncustomary or could even endanger a subject. Any circumstance where research is conducted without a full informed consent process is called waiver of consent. This is an uncommon situation that is rarely approved by the FSU IRB. The research must meet very specific guidelines, including that it is impractical or impossible to obtain consent and the research has potential to be of great benefit. A waiver of consent may be approved if the consent process might endanger or harm the participant. When working with persons who are not able to read or write with participants in foreign locations where it would be problematic to have signed consent forms, it is possible to use a consent or assent script. The researcher reads the script, then the participant indicates verbally that he or she is willing to participate. The verbal agreement may be audio or video recorded instead of in written form. Young children may be read a statement indicating what they are asked to do and asked if that's okay. 
for anonymous surveys, where the consent form would be the only identifying information. It is possible to have a return of the survey, or clicking through the survey online, as indication of consent. In this case, request waiver of documentation of consent. For video or audio recording in venues where consent is not secured from every participant and individuals in an audience are not the subject of the research, putting up signs indicating the session will be audio or video recorded and giving instructions as to where to sit or stand to not be in the video is sufficient. Always gain consent from the organization or venue prior to audio or video recording unless the event is taking place in a public setting where anyone could record it. For person-on-the-street interviews, where no identifying information is collected, it is possible to use a business card with the name of the project, your contact information, major professor's contact information, and IRB contact information, and ask for participation using a script instead of presenting a consent form. Answering questions can be considered giving consent for these brief, informal interviews. Research involving public or private schools, or facilities such as hospitals, may take several months to clear. Every school district and hospital seems to have a different policy and paperwork for IRB approval, so be prepared to work with a variety of forms and processes. Make sure to allow time for approval of parents or guardians if working with minors or mentally impaired persons who are not able to give consent on their own. Conducting research in schools brings up not only parental consent and student assent issues, but also consent of the teacher and principal. For districts that have an IRB, that approval will be required along with FSU IRB's approval. The approval of the school district, local school principal, and teachers or hospital IRB is secured after FSU's IRB has approved the project. Make sure to allow extra time for these levels of approval. Students have to be provided the option to opt out or not participate without being put in an awkward position relative to their classmates. Any video or audio recording must not capture the likeness or voice of any students from whom there is no parental consent or no assent. Parents will need to know when the activity will take place during the school day, how long it will take, and the extent to which it will disrupt their child's normal school activities. Researchers normally should not conduct research on their own students or employees they supervise without special protections in place. When the researcher is also the participant's teacher or supervisor, this situation is called dual roles. Arrangements must be made to avoid participants feeling that they must participate to please their teacher or supervisor, which is coercion. Some methods for solving the dual roles problem include having a colleague obtain consent so that the researcher does not know who is participating, conducting interviews after the person is no longer a student in your class, or having a colleague collect and de-identify the data before the researcher has access to it. Deception includes not being straightforward about what the research topic engages because it might cause participants to change their responses. Your consent form, recruitment materials, and other information about your project should represent the research aims and activities truthfully unless you have specifically indicated in your IRB protocol that you are using deception and the deception has IRB approval. Deception can be helpful in psychological studies examining participants' true motivations for their actions or their beliefs about topics where they might otherwise censor their responses to reflect social norms. Deception can also be helpful in observing participants' actions, such as use of gestures in teaching, where telling the subject your true intent might cause them to react in a different way than they normally would in that setting.
even if you are using deception, the consent form must accurately represent what the subjects will be asked to do, how long the research will take, confidentiality and anonymity, risks and benefits, and other essential information. Only the specifics of the research goals can be deceptive. The use of deception requires a debriefing explaining the deception and why it was used, an apology for the deception, and an offer to delete the participant's data if requested to do so. Approval of the protocol normally extends for one year. If the project will extend longer than a year, a protocol renewal is required. If you make changes to your protocol after it is approved, you must submit them for approval using a change of protocol form prior to implementing the changes. If something goes wrong and a participant is harmed, you must submit an adverse event report. This concludes the video on planning research with human subjects. For more information regarding specific topics introduced in this video, see the Florida State University Human Subjects Committee website.